Two would-be robbers were foiled today by a man, and some called him a real-life Charles Bronson. I refuse to be a victim of violent crime. For 14 years, Lance Thomas was a successful watch dealer in this West Los Angeles neighborhood, selling expensive luxury and vintage watches. That all changed following a series of armed robberies in the area, in which a number of shopkeepers were brutally murdered. One associate said, Lance, you better have a gun. There's a lot of you know, people getting killed in the neighborhood, and you should have, at least have a gun. I, I reluctantly said, OK, and put it in front of me. Now, this was in front of me, this watchmaker's bench. I put a, a 38 revolver right about here. Within weeks of getting the gun, Lance found he needed it. Over the other side of this watchmaker's bench, two clients, uh, one client was uh, waiting for me to find his watch. And I was going through the watches to see if his watch was ready to pick up. Two other male individuals came in uh, the shop, stood behind him, knocked him on the head. And he went down, and then they went up in a combat stance, at least one of them did, with a 9 millimeter in his hand. And, yelling at me giving me his watches what i did was i was looking through the watches and i didn't do anything fast because he had shot me if i had to reach for something sure. so he's going give me watch give me watch and, he's, and i went i went and that was it it's as simple as that i just decided not to be a victim in an instant i'm not the fastest gun in the west i'm not i'm not wild bill hickok i'm not i was scared to death the man who tried to rob Lance was shot in the face, but he survived and was sentenced to five years in prison. His accomplice got away. What if, what if I didn't have the gun there? What if it was sitting on my desk behind me? What if, what if, what if the, the scenarios were, were endless and I found myself, if it ever happened again, to reduce the probability of, of losing my life? Lance did that by practicing at the gun range, training at a gym several days a week, and by working out gunfight tactics to every robbery scenario he could think of. He bought several more guns and hid them every three feet behind the showcase so that one would always be within reach if robbers struck again. Three and a half months later, they did. It was 7.15 in the evening, and the store had uh, three customers in it, an employee, and two individuals came in with armed with a, um, uh, I believe, a Mach 10 and an automatic pistol. All of a sudden, Lance said, hit the floor, Jerry. And I don't know how, nobody was holding on to me. I just went down. Immediately came up, firing at uh, both of them, and uh, firing at me as I came up. In the middle of the gunfight, with two robbers inside the store and two others outside, Lance Thomas managed to call 911. I need a, a police car at 12118 uh, Santa Monica, robbery in progress. Where is this at? Uh, Santa Monica, L uh, the, the watch company. The watch company. It's all slow motion. There's lots of flashes of light looking down the barrel of an armed robber repeatedly firing his weapon point-blank range, trying to stop them from killing me and everybody in the shop. Lance is very quick, I mean very quick, and he, he doesn't have a, a fear that a lot of people have. Lance shot and killed the two robbers, despite having been shot himself once in the neck and three times in the shoulder. He almost died that night in the hospital. Let's go all the way back mentally to ground zero. I'm faced with an armed intruder. Now, I have to make a mental decision to be a victim of his mercy. Or exercise the right of self-defense and fight back. And in fighting back, part of that is the willingness to die and to kill. It's a hard choice. After two gunfights, Lance Thomas decided additional precautions were necessary. He spent more time practicing drawing his gun. He also put in a surveillance camera, hired a part-time security guard, and upgraded his arsenal of guns. Two years passed. And then it happened again. There's a six-foot-five guy with a nine-millimeter Glock in my face. He said, don't reach for it, I'll kill you. 
And then what did you think? He reached for it immediately and got shot through the neck here, out the back. I was able to get the, my hand on a, on a semi-automatic weapon and torqued my wrist and shot three times. He shot twice more. He died in the scene. The robber was the third to die in as many shootouts at Thomas's store. I went to the hospital and it was, uh, they didn't sever my spinal cord or, or my jungler. It just went in here and out here. So a band-aid sufficed and I was back to work the next day. He said, don't do anything or I'll kill you. So why do anything? If you hadn't reached for your gun, maybe you wouldn't have gotten shot. Maybe he would have gotten a few of your watches, but it would have been over. It would have been up to him, wouldn't it? He had his finger on the trigger, and he intended to negotiate. There's no negotiation. I, my life is too precious for that. Did you think after that incident, maybe, you know, yeah. things, things are getting out of control here. Yes. It's time to get out of town. I put a double door in then. They came in anyway. It would be Lance's fourth gunfight. Two robbers, linked to one of L.A.'s most violent gangs, entered the store. They pretended to open the front door to leave, turned around, said, you're dead, and fired the weapons. Man, but that wasn't quick enough. I killed them both. Lance Thomas was totally justified in, uh, in everything that he did. Detective Lee Kingsford investigated the shootings. All of the suspects had extensive criminal records. They knew what they were doing. They just didn't know who they were doing it against. When Lance Thomas emerged from his store after the last shootout, neighboring merchants cheered. I go over to Lance Thomas place and look at the guy laying down in the, beside the door. And I said to myself, God damn, <laughs> he's really tough. What concerns me is, is that a lot of shopkeepers have armed themselves and viewed me as, as somewhat of a hero. And it's rather dangerous for them to, in my view, to, to take guns in their shop and expect to, to perform the same way I did, not knowing how I spent so much time and effort preparing. Shortly after hosing the blood off the sidewalk in front of his watch store, Thomas closed up his business and went into seclusion. When word reached him that gang members were out for revenge, Thomas closed his store for good. But he strongly believes he did the right thing in trying to defend himself. A man must live by his principle, who he is, not what he is. In fact, isn't that why anybody remembers anybody? Who they are? Not what he owns or what he is or what his title is, but how they feel about him. What he... There are things in this life more important than what we own, and that is the principle in which we live by. By 1996, Lance Thomas had retreated from the world, running his watch business by appointment only from a location he asked Justice Files not to disclose. He's had no armed confrontation since, but as the arsenal that surrounds him suggests, his life will never be the same. It's kind of made an old man out of me, out of a fun-loving young man, I can tell you that. And I understand what a soldier goes through when he encounters mortal combat. Combat. It's, it's hell. It's something to be avoided. But if you have to do it, you must be responsible. Because I prepared myself so thoroughly, I was able to survive. Also in 1996, Lance was one of only two Santa Monica, California residents to have a concealed weapons permit. I think that the issuance of concealed weapons permits in any state of the union can have just cause and should be issued. However, most citizens that would raise a gun haven't been uh, prepared to face the consequences of raising that gun. And I think the judicial system must never take the right away from citizens to bear arms and defend themselves. But I think that they should cause citizens to be more responsible when evoking that right. Lance has invoked his right to defend himself with deadly consequences, and he recognizes the personal price he's paid. Many people would refer to me as paranoid. I have reduce my contact with most people. Life has been one of seclusion, of tactical defense. Do I feel safer? I just want to feel alive. A 
gun turns a roadside argument deadly when the justice files continues.